as you sip your coffee, may I offer my hand to uh, mm. Roger and welcome you to a good rock and tonight. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be talking with you. And I guess uh, right off the bat, let's say congratulations on two things. So your 20th anniversary, I believe this is the month that they're marking it's your 20th anniversary. I believe it is. Yeah. And uh, congratulations on innuendo going gold in Canada. Thank you very much. It's, it's uh, wonderful. It's the first gold record on, on this label, and it's the first territory to go gold on the album. So thank, you. thank you very much indeed in Canada. <laughs> Did um, you ever, uh, I mean, we're looking at 20th anniversary. I mean, did you ever look back at the time of Queen's inception and say, yeah, we'll be around 20 years from now? Oh, absolutely not. No, and no. nobody could even dream that uh, a rock group would last for 20 years. No, mm -hmm. especially with, and the main extraordinary thing about that, I think, is the fact that it's the same four members. Yeah. And Roger, if you can, can you take me back? Uh, I'm just curious as to how it all started for Queen. How'd you guys finally come together? Well, yeah, long story, but we were all at college. We were all... Uh, uh, studying in, in university at London, in different colleges in London, all doing different things. Brian had already got a physics degree when I met him, and he was studying infrared astronomy, doing a PhD. Mm -hmm. uh, Freddie had a diploma in graphics, uh, graphic design and, and art, basically, at an art college. Um, John had a, um, eventually got a first-class electronics degree, which is quite an achievement. Mm -hmm. And I managed to struggle through a biology degree. So, and we were all doing these different things, and I met Brian at first, and we got on very well. Uh, met him in the college bar, you know. And we had the same taste in music, and the same influences, you know. Was Hendrix, all that, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we put together a band, which eventually fell to pieces, but we kept together, and we'd got to know Freddie by then. By, so he suggested that um, he liked our playing, so he suggested that he come in. So then we had the nucleus of the three. And then we just looked around and we just bumped in. At another college, we bumped into John Deacon. And we had gone through about five bass players before we actually got John, who, who was the one who seemed to fit in best, you know. He recently picked up an award as, what, the best song in the last 25 years in UK music. Did you know that it was going to have that kind of impact? Sometimes it's a bit of a rope around your neck because people always want to talk about that instead of what you're doing at present, you know. Mm. But that was, I mean, that, that was number one for nine weeks or something, and it revolutionized the way videos were looked at because we had this video which was regarded as the first sort of promo type video. And they, this particular program called Top of the Pops in England had to play it because of their policy every week at the end of the program. And they hated us for it ever. And they never played anything of ours for years <laughs> afterwards because they'd been forced to put this thing on, you know. <laughs> So, I mean, it changed, it made rock videos important in England and possibly Europe as well, you know, although ABBA have a lot to do with that in Europe as well, you know. <laughs> This is pre-MTV. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in a meeting with, um, maybe Roger told you this, did he? With, some, with some executives at, at Electra saying, we have this, we've made this video for the Human Rights Team, it's done us a lot of good in England. Can you give us some money to make another video for the next thing? And they said, no, there's no way that's ever going to be a powerful force in, yeah. uh, in, the, in America, you know, videos are never going to be important. You're saying that Innuendo is one of the best albums you've made. Uh, is there a particular reason for that? What happened? Um, well, I think we've got rid of all the problems that existed between the four of us. That's important. You know, we've been together a long time and relationships are hard, as you know, and it's not always been easy. But um, these days, I think we regard each other as kind of family because a lot of other stuff's happened, like I was telling you. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff has happened personally to us. And eventually, the group becomes the most stable kind of family unit that you know. So it's, it's very, quite important to us as a, as a sort of, uh, what's the word, as a part of your, your psyche. Mm -hmm. And we've come to terms with that. And we actually, what I'm saying is, um, we like each other a lot, and we're quite supportive to each other these days. It's, it's good for us all. Right? I'd well, like to see to you guys you. again on tour, so what's so the plan I. there? So would I, yeah. Well, Freddie's not up for it at the moment. He reckons he's... He would rather be in the studio at the moment. In fact, we've already made some tracks for the next album. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, and we'll be going back in the end of the month. But as far as being on stage, he finds it hard. I think that's... I mean, yeah, he has his own reasons in his own mind. But for all of us, it was a lot of fun to be on tour. You know, you, can, you play, which is great, and you have a lot of life as well. You know, you can meet a lot of people. But for Freddie, it was quite a discipline to keep his voice in trim to, 
for the range that he was putting into it and mm -hmm. the power and also the energy he was he had to be kind of a fitness fanatic and he wouldn't drink after the the show he wouldn't smoke he wouldn't go out he wouldn't do anything he'd, he'd always treat himself keep himself spotlessly in shape so that every concert would count you know and that's a strain really so we would say that was a lot of fun wasn't it buddy at the end of the tour and he'd say that was actually hard work and i want a year off you know yeah so um at the moment he doesn't want to do it it may change i would love to think that we could be out there again i mean that would be my fondest dream i gotta tell you i, I would i would give a lot to be out in tour next month you know? i don't think it's gonna happen that soon well, we certainly look forward to seeing him if and when it does happen. So when you go back, tell Freddie just to get his mind together and, and get out there. <laughs> it's yeah, been a pleasure okay. talking no, to you. Thanks a lot.